by night But power fell from heaven And God saved my soul Got home about twelve and felt fine Something got a hold of me Yes, sir. Better move up front <laughs> Yeah Something got a hold of me Praise God Something got a hold of me I went there to find Low mile at night, God certainly got a hold on me. About that time, he started to preach, and he looked right straight back at me. Told everybody how mean I was. He didn't talk like he thought much of me. But something got a hold of me. Yep. Something got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God certainly got a hold of me. I went there to fight, but oh my, that night, God certainly got a hold of me. Amen. I hope something gets a hold of you today. I hope you that need to get saved, get saved. I hope some of you backsliders get right with God today. Hallelujah. He's more than a savior. He's more than a savior. And the great king. More than the Lamb of God. Sent to redeem. More than his willingness. To make us free. He's more than a savior. Savior and King. He was so willing to take the place of all who have sinned and face this grave. If you only trust Him and the price He paid, He's more than a Savior. If you'll trust him today, you must believe only in him, or you'll never reach heaven as you had planned. If you want to be with him, there's only one way, he's more than a savior. If you trust him today, he's more than a savior. Won't you trust him today? Amen. Hey, Billy Joe, you know them two songs we talked about? You know that one, that Jason Crabb song, and then that other one I about sing, Paul on the road to Damascus? Let's sing those, huh? Um, I did that road to Damascus. Start with them. I'm Which one did you do? I did that. Uh, Jason Crab song, do that though. Oh, do please, it again. Please forgive me. Yeah, do it again. I'm not too good on that song. Where is it? Where is it? In there somewhere. Some kind of markers in here or something. Mark my page. Mark my pages. Hard to get a hillbilly organized, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's me. I'm hillbilly. <laughs> I am hillbilly. Where is that song? I did it once already. Please forgive me. Yeah. Please forgive me. Amen. Lord, please forgive me for not being able to find your songs when I need to. We all need to sing this every day, man. My sleep is gone. My heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe how much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. 
When my the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered all around, please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, I will serve you until my dying day. Help others find a way at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory would take the time to care for one of me. But I read it in the Bible, that old story, that he pled for my forgiveness, for he was dying on the tree. Please forgive me, I need your grace to make it through. All I have is you, I'm at your mercy. Lord, I will serve you until my dying day. Help others find a way at your mercy. Lord, forgive me. Oh, please forgive me. Oh, oh. Amen. Stand up, Paul, dry up your tears. You must preach my gospel for many long years. I'll take you to Damascus, the road that's called straight. Now you meet Ananias, and there you must wait. I counted on Adam, I counted on Cain. Counted on Jonah, he was the same. Counted on Judas, he proved untrue. Now go tell the world, oh, I counted on you. I like this, Billy Joe. Now go tell the world, Paul, oh, I counted on you. Hey, man, give my hand on that. You get it done on that one, Billy Joe. I can't believe you never sung that for us before. That's a good one. I'm unworthy to sing songs like that. Well, that's a good song. I'm unworthy. Now, please forgive me. I, you know, I know I'm unworthy to sing that song. But, you know, Jason Crabb does well, David, that. work your way up here. You're going to take the offering after after he plays this song. Okay, let him play it. This is a song about my son. I wrote this song with tears. I can't keep my mouth dry. <coughs> Spit everywhere when I'm saying it. <laughs> Hope nothing's getting out there. <laughs> I wrote this song one day up in uh, North Carolina, or a place up there. Well, my wife was going to Walmart, Walmart, <laughs> Walmart, do some shopping, and this is when she was well, and she could she could walk in forward over there for three or four hours. It didn't matter. It, it didn't make her tired back then. But I wrote this song while she was gone that day. It was on a December day, our son Bill was called away. Don't know why he seemed to understand, but I know God had a plan. Our son's fate was in his hand. He said, son, you're welcome to your final home. God reached down his hand. Come the water on command Pull Bill from that angry sea of wine Said my son come go with me There's the beauty you must see Waiting there by the river of life It was on a stormy night Our son Bill lost his life he had walked that way so many times before. I'm not sure what happened there, 
But I know God answered prayer. He carried me to that glory land on high. God reached out his hand on the water on command. Oh, Bill, from that angry sea of mine. Said, my son, come go with me. There's such beauty you must see. Waiting there by the river on the wild. Just waiting there by the river on the wild. Yeah. You know, Billy Joe, I'm, I'm going to have you pray here in a minute, and then uh, we're going to take the offering up. But let me just say this. Uh, that probably, I don't know, it was probably the darkest day of your life when you got the message that your son had. Broke my heart. Broke my heart. Died, yeah. Any of us, if we receive that kind of message, it would be the Amen. darkest day of our life. Said, he wrote that Mr. song. Baby, if you don't get yourself pulled together, you're going to die right here. Right? Yeah. So, Billy Joe's got a tender <laughs> I would heart. I'd rather die than see him go. Brother Joe, we need we need uh, God's people to give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, amen. God don't need the money. He owns it all, but he needs to teach us to give and be part of his work. Right. So you uh, ask God's blessing upon this offering, please. Oh, our, our Heavenly Father, Lord, show us what we must do, dear Lord. Reach down and touch us, dear Heavenly Father. Put a conscience in, me, in us, dear Lord, that uh, yeah. we won't be able to turn away and know what you mean and what you say and what you will do and what you won't do. And, and Lord, we know that there are none comparable to you, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, give us this day. Give us this day our, our bread, dear Lord. Lead us not into temptation, dear Heavenly Father. Keep us away from the temptation, dear Lord. There's so much of it in this life, dear Lord. I don't know why I'm getting off on that, but I am. But Lord, there's just... Forgive me for our sin, dear Lord, and, and put the salt in my heart, dear Lord. I bless my wife, dear Lord, today. She had another bad fall. You know all about that. And, and Lord, just uh, watch over her and take care of her. And pray for this, this ministry here. Brother Barga does a great work here. I think the people here realize what they've got here in Brother Barga and his, his wife and sister Doris. Dear Lord, I pray that you will have your way here in this. And, uh, that the uh, pray for this offering that it'll go farther, dear Lord, to minister in your word and, and preaching to the poor. And, and uh, we'll give you all the praise, dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Play, man. He's got to collect it. Or are you going to sing without the guitar? I was going to do one. I was going to do one. Yeah, I want you to sing. Yeah. This will be my last song, won't it? No, one more. Oh, one more. Okay. I'm going to cut your pay. You don't get moving fast. I wish you would. We're trying to take the I offering. Just, uh, this is an organized church. This is a formal yeah, church, I'm Billy sorry. Joe. Come <laughs> on. Do something. Wait. <laughs> As we journey along. Life's wicked road. So selfish are we for silver and gold. You can treasure your wealth, your diamonds and gold. But my friends, it won't save your poor wicked soul. For when God calls from his home on your earthly wealth, you must say goodbye. Then it's useless to you if you stray from the foe. Well, my friend, it won't save your poor wicked soul. Good deal. Amen. The rich man like Paul will be judged at that time. But all of his wealth We'll be left behind For no matter how much Earthly wealth you can hold My friend, it won't save Your poor wicked soul Well, my friend, it won't save 
your poor wicked soul. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Sing another Billy Joe. We're going to save your poor wicked yeah, soul. Yeah, yeah, we're going to cut your face. Sing another one. I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. No sad goodbyes will there be spoken, and time won't matter anymore. You are and I'm longing for you and someday on the I'll stand that my home shall be eternal Across the river, where my faith will end in sight. There's just a few more days to labor, then I will take my heavenly flight. You are I'm longing for you. And someday on the I'll stand, there my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land, Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. Give him a good hand, praise the Lord. We're so glad. This is a formal church we have here, very formal. <laughs> the Lord is good. The reading for today is in First Second Corinthians chapter one. Turn to there in your Bible. We use the authorized version of the Bible, the King James Bible. It is the Word of God in the English language. That's what we use here. And of Second Corinthians chapter one. I'm going to teach you something today. How many of you like to be comfortable? How many of you like to be comfortable? How, how, many, of you are, how many of you are comfortable this morning? You, you, uh, is, is the temperature just about right? How, how many of you are too hot? How many of you are too cold? Had to be a woman, you know that. <laughs> How many of you are just right? How many of you don't even know where you are? <laughs> Comfort, we love it. We're, 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 uh, we're so spoiled with comfort in America, it's pathetic. We as Christians, we have such comfort and such luxury. And I was talking to a Christian yesterday, a good Christian man. He's in another state. I had some questions to him about ministry, and he's a fine Christian. And and uh, I, I was talking to him, and we got it so good. We got phones where you just look in your phone, and it's like you're in the same room with someone. It's called FaceTime if you got an iPhone. And, and so... He's in his backyard. I could almost smell the steak cooking. I called him late in the day, and 
And I was talking to him about we're so comfortable. He says, yeah, I'm about to eat steak. And uh, we can, uh, most everybody in America, we can have steak if we want it. It might be a little sacrifice for you if you don't have much income. But I'm telling you, too, we can have steak if we want it, can't we? I mean, we can have anything. There's some places, there's some places in third world countries, listen to me, listen to me. They walk hundreds of miles and children dying en route. And when we get to the place where they have some bags of meal, they cook it over an open fire. Yeah, we got all the comforts of leisure, of food and air conditioning. But those comforts aren't the important comforts. Those, those comforts that we have as Christians in America hinder us from being good Christians. It hinders us from being good Christians. I'm talking about a comfort today, the peace that passeth all understanding. I'm talking about comfort in the midst of tribulation. Amen. I want to preach so much, I didn't even make any announcements or anything, but we're just going to go on. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, under the church of God, which is at Corneth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He always gives those uh, opening statements of grace and peace. Amen. Amen. God brought uh, grace. By grace we are saved through faith, not that of ourself. It's a gift of God, not of works, uh, lest any man should boast. Look at verse 3 here. Pay attention. Y'all got it in your Bible? Everybody got it? And what page is it on? I want you to get it. Huh? 1240. Look at verse 3. 1450. Okay. Uh, we got people got different King James Bibles. That's okay, but try to get on Second Corinthians chapter one. Have you got it? Someone around you help you find it if you don't need it. If someone don't have a Bible, get a Bible in their hands. I got plenty of pew Bibles out there. Yeah, yeah. Second Corinthians one three. Blessed be God. Bless the Lord at all times. Another scripture says. Let us praise Him continuously. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Comfort. Real comfort. Comfort that comes from heaven. I mean the kind of comfort where you can sleep at night. I'm talking about the comfort that when you go out this door or you might even be... You, there's people who are sitting right here now. You're bombasted by bad thoughts and fear and trouble and things don't you just wish you could get some comfort i mean even right now don't you just wish you could have it Amen. it's available why can i say that i got it i got it well because you ain't i got more trouble i got more trouble than anybody in here I get more accusations. I get more. I mean, man. I mean, I got income and fire daily. <laughs> when you preach like I do, you become a target. Just like Paul was. Just like anybody was. Just like anybody that preaches this, a solid, sound gospel preacher today. We are targets. Because we're getting to be few and far between. But I got comfort. Amen. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort. <clears throat> Look at verse 4. Look, pay attention now. You know you got fear. You know you got worry. You know you're at wit's end. You know you can't hardly sleep at night. You know some of you are driven to... You say, well, Pastor, I got to smoke a little marijuana because I got so much... Oh, forget marijuana. Get Jesus. Amen. Forget your dope. Forget your stupidity. Yeah. Now look at verse 4. Now listen, 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 listen. Who comforteth us, Christians, in all our tribulation. That's trouble, amen? amen. Tribulation, that's another word for trouble. How many of you got trouble? <laughs> 
The Bible says this. Job, in the book of Job it says, man is born on the trouble as the sparks fly upward. How many of you can identify with that? <laughs> I mean, just when you think you got to settle on the trouble, here comes two more, amen? And if you don't have no trouble today, I guarantee you it's coming tomorrow. <laughs> It's coming. Troubles come and go. But it says, Who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Now why is he comforting me? In my, and he does. You might want to sit down and compare notes with me. I don't really care to do that. But I think in my life I got more trouble than anybody in this church Amen. sitting here right now. Amen. And probably anybody out in Facebook. <coughs> and I don't know. There might be someone out in Facebook. Some... some one that's standing fast for the Lord and being deeply persecuted. I don't know. But I will tell you something. It said, who comforted us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble. Now listen to me. You say, who do you think? I I'll tell you who I am. I'm a person that's got a ton of trouble, but I'm comfortable and I can help you. I can help every one of you. Amen. You just listen to this preacher. As I preach you the word of God. And I'll get you in the same condition. So that you can help others. Amen. Aren't you a sorry piece of existence? Yep. Only thing you can do is grumble and moan and complain about your troubles. Why don't you get right with God in the midst of your trouble and be comforted so you can help someone else? Amen. God didn't put us on this earth here. Now, many of you that are sitting here right now, you need to get saved. You ain't even saved. Amen. That's your big problem. Amen. You got guilt and conscience upon you because you ain't even born again. You love your sin. You love your dope and your sex and your wickedness and all your lying and stealing and all that. You need to get born again. But if you're saved, I'm saved. I got more trouble than you. I'm comfortable. I can get you comfortable. Why do I want to get you comfortable, Billy Joe? So you can help somebody. Don't you feel kind of pathetic as a Christian going around always telling someone your troubles and trying to get help when, when you ought to be helping others? You know what it tells about? If you're a real Christian, I, only you know if you're... I don't know if anybody's born again in this building other than me. I'm the only guy I can speak for. Amen. I can't speak for my wife, yeah. who I believe is a Christian. I can't guarantee nobody. I can't guarantee Doris. I can't guarantee Billy Joe. Only one I can guarantee is me. Because I know me. Amen. There's all kinds of examples in the Bible and in Christian history of of people looking like good Christians and Christians and they forsake the faith. I have all kinds of them come through our doors. Amen. Yeah. Which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. So comfort comes from ah sing your little song. How many of you enjoy my singing? No, don't lie to me. I don't have a good voice at all. How many of you enjoy my singing better than Billy Joe's? Oh, the whole, the whole, the whole place. Pe people on Facebook, you can't see it, but every hand in the auditorium is raised. Praise God. If you believe that, I got a bridge in Brooklyn I'll sell you too. <laughs> not Billy Joe's a singer, I'm not. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. Ah, the Holy Ghost from heaven. Somebody find that page number for me. Look in your book in the back. The Comforter has come. Hand it to Billy Joe. He can sing it for me. The Comforter has come. The promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost given. Amen. 
149. 149. You got a songbook there? Find it, Billy Joe. Well, come on now. Let's get some authentic information here. What, I got to get a book myself? Come on, church, wake up. <laughs> oh, they're all good. I guess just sing it. No, we want the comforter has come. Has anybody found it yet? Oh, my Lord, a big congregation like this today. Huh? 349, Billy Joe. Come here. <laughs> Go ahead. Wherever man is found, wherever human hearts and human woe abound. I don't know. The bring that thing back. Take a tune here, Billy. Victor, yeah. bring me that phone back here. Yeah, get that phone with me. <laughs> and bring, bring me that book over here. Well, shame on you. You ought to learn it. Have, have your wife put it back. All right, give me the book. 349. Turn to it in your hymnals. Come on now. Got it? 349. Let's get it. We're going to sing it. You learn that song, Billy. You ought to know that song, my Lord, as long as you've been saved. All right, you got it? Everybody got 349? All right. Oh, spread the tidings round wherever man is found. Come on. Wherever human hearts and human woes abound, let every Christian tongue proclaim the joyful sound. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Comforter has come, the Holy Ghost from heaven, the Father's promise given. Oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, the Comforter has come. I'm up a little bit too high, I guess. I ain't a singer. Come on, church, let's sing it. On the second verse. The long, long night is past. The morning breaks at last and hushed the dreadful wail and fury of the blast as ever the golden hills. The day advances fast. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven. The Father's promise given. Oh, spread the tidings round. Wherever man is found. The comforter has come. Now look at this. Look at this third one. Pay attention to words as we sing it now. Come on, sing along. Lo, the great King of Kings, with healing in his wings to every captive soul, a full deliverance brings. And through the vacant cells, the song of triumph rings. The comforter has come. The Comforter has come, the Comforter has come, the Holy Ghost from heaven, the Father's promise given. Oh, spread the tidings round, wherever man is found, the Comforter has come. On the last verse, O oh, boundless love divine, how shall this tongue of mine to wandering mortals tell the matchless grace divine that I, a child of hell, should in his image shine 
The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. The Holy Ghost from heaven, the Father's promise given, who spread the tidings round. Wherever a man is found, the Comforter has come. Well, he's come. You don't know nothing about him because you're not even saved. You never even heard if there been any Holy Ghost. God's Spirit doesn't bear witness with your spirit. You know why? I'll tell you why it doesn't because you're not saved. If you're saved, that blessed comforter, the Holy Ghost, lives within you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Why don't you take advantage of it? I was riding down the street with my dear wife yesterday. We had prepared the meal and got things ready over here and we we're going down the street and then I, we just happened to be driving uh, uh, along uh, the Halifax River and on the one side of the street uh, were some lovely homes that are on the river some of them very expensive home million dollar homes and on the other side uh, some other side uh, uh, homes not so good and, and the ones on the right side by the uh, Halifax River they pretty well trimmed up nice look good and everything and then I seen a few crooked telephone poles I noticed and a few lawns not cut and I saw the the uh, uh, I was noticing some of the perfections of Daytona Beach and some of the imperfections and I told my wife as we rode down the street I said honey I'm just thinking about heaven a little bit. You know, the older get, the older you get, the more you think about heaven. Amen, Billy Joe? Amen. Beulah Land, amen. amen? That's city four square. You know, if we focus on heaven, we wouldn't be all enthralled or we wouldn't be all so excited about this world. Amen. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Others laid for me away beyond the blue. Oh, the angels beckoned me to heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, glory to God. You love this world too much. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why do you love the world so much? Why do you care about all this junk? You're going to be persecuted as a Christian. But I'm not going to be persecuted in heaven. It's going to be wonderful. I'm going to be comfortable. I'm going to, have the, I'm going to be in the presence of God. You know why I'm comfortable? Listen. 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 I'm in his presence right now. I don't have to wait till I get to heaven to be in his presence. So you think all your troubles and tribulations and your heartaches, you have to waller in them. You, didn't get, you get in God's presence now, you'll have comfort. The comfort will take care of you. Yeah. And when you get to heaven, there'll be no more sin, no more crying, the form of no more sickness, the form of things. Be, and it'll be wonderful. Are you going there? Are you born again? I'm looking forward to endless time with God in heaven. Life is short. Only one life will soon be fat, passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. You understand that? You understand that? Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, I love it. We ain't gonna get we ain't gonna get past this comfort thing because it's an important thing, isn't it? Guess I learned something from one of my heroes, Jack Hiles. He always in any sermon Jack Hiles ever preached. It was always one great truth, one great truth. He'd get on something and he'd just hammer that thing, hammer that thing. That's why I remember Jack Howell's sermon. Of course, there's spirit-filled sermons. But he always taught his preacher. I've never really learned that from him. But Jack Howell's always preached. He said, preach a sermon, one great truth. And I'm that great truth today. Maybe a little him will rub off on me if I preach the way he did. The comforter. He lives in you if you're saved. Yeah. He lives in you if you're saved. How many of you are saved? You know for sure. 100% sure you're going to heaven. 
Some of you, about half of you don't even know. It's okay, you can know. Amen. You can have the Holy Ghost in you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll give you the witness of his spirit that you're a child of God. And he'll comfort you in all your tribulation. <coughs> I ain't looking for it. I got it. Amen. Thank God. I got it. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I found it. Amen. I'm comfortable. Man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward, tells us in Job. You know why I'm comfortable? I got the comforter. I take advantage of him. I listen to him. I think about heaven. Some of you ride down the street, think about all your troubles. I was looking around and got a, oh, I really had a, I go, was it yesterday? Day before yesterday. It was like 85. There was no no humil uh, hum humility. No, not much humility around either, but there was no humidity. Humidity. And I was going to Publix. I'd pick it up for my wife. And I got down. I know the places on, uh, uh, on uh, Atlantic Avenue or driving on the beach where there ain't no people. That's where I go, where there ain't no people. But why do you go where there's no people? Because where there's people, there's naked women. I don't need to see naked women. Amen. Fellas, you get down there on the beach and see naked women, you start thinking wrong. Am I right? Is that what happens? Huh? You start doing the double taker and then turn your car around, go back and take another look. <coughs> I want to do that. So I, I go on the beach where... Nothing but a, a few, uh, what kind of birds are them? A bunch of birds right down there. Seagulls. And a few old fishermen out there, but it ain't a, I go there, but oh, it was so beautiful. I had the windows open, and, and the clouds were so beautiful, and the, and the waves were so beautiful, and there was no humility. Hum, there was no humility, crew, but there was no humidity. Hey, humidity. <laughs> Having trouble. One. You know what my problem is? I put, forgot to put the stick up on my on my plate, but it's wiggling on me. <laughs> Sam, go get me some out of the some stick them for my partial. It's in the cabinet there up on top. I think I got one. I get to start hollering. These teeth are gonna pop out of my mouth, and that's really gonna be funny on Facebook, isn't it? <laughs> now remember I told you this is a formal church we do everything decently and in order here you got it bring it over here quickly I get these teeth plastered down I'm going to really be able to holler teeth almost jumped out of my mouth a couple times I'll find this polygrip okay folks I'm going incognito here for a minute I got it going on now. Them babies are solid. I can holler. I can jump. And I can shout. Amen. I started getting whipped there a couple times. Them babies almost popped out of my mouth. Now remember, this is a formal church. This is We have high church here at our church. We have high church. We have high church. We got hillbilly singers and and uh, we got common folks and amen aren't you glad you can have a church like that aren't you glad we don't have to put on no big show for everybody you know what my crazy preacher did he glued his teeth in in the pulpit <laughs> amen the comforter 
One thing, you can say a lot of things about me, and I ain't perfect, but I'll tell you one thing. I love God. Amen. And I love the Word of God. Amen. I'm sincere about God. Amen. Because I am, I got something a lot of you don't have here and on Facebook. I got comfort. Amen. I got comfort. I got the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Everything's all right. Amen. I had a prayer answered yesterday. Big burden. And God just swooped in. It's gone. Were you worried about it? I wasn't worried about it. But I have been waiting for God to take care of it. Amen. Took care of it yesterday. Troubles come and go, but I'm comfortable. Because I got the comforter, the Holy Ghost from heaven. Amen? Amen. See, one of two reasons you, and this is a good crowd today, one of two reasons why you folks don't have the comfort of the Holy Ghost. First thing is you might not be saved. Amen. Ain't no way you can have God's comfort if you don't have God's Spirit. And if if you have not the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. You're not saved. Amen. Quit self-deceiving yourself. Get born again. And if you do know you're saved, then you can give a good personal testimony, like the testimony we talked about in, in uh, the ninth chapter of the book of Acts today, about Paul's testimony. He was Saul of Tarsus, a wicked murderer of Christians. We did in Sunday school today. And then he's now... Paul, the great apostle. Yeah. He had a great, and he was, he was comforted. In fact, he's a guy that wrote this letter that we're preaching out of today. Paul. Of course, the Holy Ghost, he just penned down what, because God knew what Paul was going to be, and he knew who could write it, because he made his personality and, 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 and all of that. I got it. Some accuse me of being oblivious to problems and trouble sometimes. You ought to worry. I ain't going to worry. I'm going to let God take care of things. You want to sweat bullets and don't sleep at night and turn to drugs and every kind of wickedness. Go ahead and do it if you want. I can show you a better way, the way of comfort of the Holy Ghost. And God comforts me in all of my persecutions and tribulation so that I can help you. And I hope you can get it. Why do I want you to get it? So you can do what? Help somebody else. Amen. Get him saved. We got to have a Holy Ghost filled church here. We got to have a people that have a lot of comfort and unity. We have fellowship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And fellowship with one another. Amen? Amen. That's what we need. Oh, my. Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, Paul said, so our consolation also abounded. So I have problem. No, I didn't have as much as Paul. Paul had a lot more than I. I got more than you, but Paul had more than I did. I mean, he was beaten and left for dead. He, God even had to raise him from dead a couple times and all this and that, you know. He really had it. But our consolation or our comfort, that consolation, that comfort aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, here he is, Paul, me saying it, it is for your consolation. My afflictions and my battles, I have comfort and I, I tell you about it, and I, and I tell you it's okay, and I got it, and you can have it so I can get you out of your troubles. Amen. How many of you really want the comfort of God? You want to get rid of all this mess? Amen. Why don't you do it today? It's not on God's part. Amen. It's not going to be my fault. It's your fault. Amen. The love of God and the grace of God and the comfort of God are freely given. To all who will believe. Amen. Amen. 
The problem's on your part, not on God's part. Why you do it for Varga and not for me? That's your problem. It's not God's problem. It's not Varga's problem. It's your problem. Amen. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Amen. I have the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I have the peace that passeth understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. <clears throat> if you don't have it, who's the problem? I'm the problem. You're the problem. I got rid of my problem. I got the peace. I got the joy. I'm like that little guy that used to walk around. What do you used to always say? What we, me, worry? What was his name? I don't remember. Any old enough to remember that guy? He had a name. Billy Joe. Billy Joe fell asleep. He couldn't answer. <laughs> got you again, Billy Joe. I got you. I got you. And whether we be afflicted, listen now, it is for your consolation. So I take some licks so that you can see. Man, Varga taking the licks. There's some people against him, but he's got joy and comfort. He's okay. Amen. And that'll help you to be okay, man. Amen. Why don't we get okay together and do something in this wicked city for the God of God's glory? Amen? Amen. Why don't we reach this wicked city for Christ? Why don't our why don't our church become a soul winning church? Why don't we get right with God? City, you're walking out here and back to your same old crap. Same old stand on street corners. Amen. Same old sniffing around trying to get yourself some more drugs. Amen. I got so many people that lie to me every day. Amen. God help us. God help us get honest with ourselves, honest with God, honest with the preacher, honest with one another. And have the comfort of God and the joy of God. And start reaching this city for Jesus Christ. Amen. And forget about ourselves. Right. Start thinking about others. Yeah. I'm not important. You're not important. The lost and dying world is important. Amen. Get on the team if you're not on the team. And if you're backslidden, get right with God. Lord, thank you now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, Father. Like my dear friend, Brother Savage, used to pray, used to cry out, Father, Father. Best prayer warrior I ever do. A.B. Savage. Been in heaven a long time now. I lived to be 95, but he was, he was a prayer warrior. Father, I've got comfort today. I'm not lying. I ain't messing with these people. I sleep good at night. I get the attacks. I got the comfort. Some of my dear folks right here, regulars in the church, ain't saved yet. They come. Some out on Facebook ain't saved. You know if you're saved. Why don't you listen to the Holy Ghost today and get born again? The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I did it April 4th, 1969, 19310, Glenwood Lane, New Berlin, Wisconsin. You ever done it? You know if you had it, it'll change your life. Old things pass away. You need it today. You need it. You need it. You need it. Call upon them. Repent, turn from your sins. This is a prayer. Pray it in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I have a wicked heart. Cleanse me of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Let me understand the power of the resurrection. I believe the gospel. 
I believe the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I accept it. This very moment. Save me, dear Lord. Save me. The Bible says, Whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Any of you that have, you're saved like I am. And you can have the comfort. You can have the joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Help us, dear Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks in church that were saved today. Folks out there on Facebook. Come to prayer meeting tonight. Wouldn't it be great if everyone here now come back at 5 for prayer meeting? Got a good bunch here today. You need to pray. Come at 5. Prayer meeting at 5. Church at 6. We're going to have a rescue mission meal on Tuesday, 10 o'clock, this Tuesday. That'll be our next service after tonight's service. Wednesday night, we'll have prayer meeting at 5, church at 6. Then next Sunday, those are our appointed times. I love you folks. I got the comfort. I got it, I got it, I got it. You can have it, sister. Claim it by faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. If any man lack wisdom, ask God, who giveth all liberally and upbraideth not. But don't ask with doubting. If you doubt, you won't get it. Because the Bible says a double-minded man or woman, that's mankind, is unstable in all their ways. That's your problem. Amen. You're unstable. Amen. You're double-minded. You got one foot in the world and one foot for God. You're double-minded. A double-minded person is unstable. How many of you know you're double-minded? Yeah. We, all, we all are somewhat. We all are somewhat. Let's get focused Amen. by faith. Get the cover. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Some of you Facebook people, you ought to come to prayer meeting at 5 tonight. 501 Ridgewood Avenue, Holly Hill, Church at 6. Bye-bye, Facebook. We'll be broadcasting tonight.